declined. Bishop D4, which has become incredibly topical uh, when uh, during my time, Bishop E7 was so much the go-to move that it was like nothing else. Uh, today, we even see Magnus playing A7, A6, and this move, Bishop B4, has just uh, become the, the fashion. There's no explaining the fashion and why the things come and go, Miro, but for yourself, I mean, you've observed the uh, tournaments, you know the players so very well, Bishop B4, why has it become so popular at the highest level? For no particular reason. For no reason. As far as I can tell. Just fashion. It's no, a... I mean, it's dynamic, right? Bishop E7 sure. has a very solid reputation. Bishop right. B5, 4. Yeah. When you combine it with a moment like C5 at the right time, it gets sure. very sharp. And the, you know, the reason could be that it's very demanding. So it's either you accept something which is dull, equal, and pretty much I say, I make a draw with black straight from the opening, which has been the case quite a few times in those elite led tournaments, sure. or you have to play something sharp and then black might get a chance to win the game. While in the Queen's Gambit decline, classical with bishop on e7, mm -hmm. uh, the moment you kind of start thinking of winning the game, it's past move 40, like when the dust settled, and yes, so on. It's, it's, it's strangely a bit more aggressive. Right, and it also allows black to take a lot more risk as well, if they need to. And yeah, there we, we do see the queen coming out to give a check, forcing the knight to block that check and defend the bishop on b4. Exactly, and the idea is that by provoking the knight to c6, uh, Black has, loses his uh, chance to counterattack in the center with the move c7 and c5. Captures on c4, and since Black cannot play c5, he tries to make a virtue of necessity, and in this case, he starts to play for the break e6, e5. All very, very standard play. Jovi, let's just go around the uh, tournament hall, and where would you like to take us? Um, let's have a look at the game between Wesley So and Lebron Aronian. Let's start from the top. Indeed. The uh, American derby. Exactly.
victory. Fabiano is on the verge of pulling away from the pack and increasing his lead. That's a beautiful move. Knight d3. That's incredibly powerful as Fabiano is about to unleash uh, an attack on White's king. King h3. Queen d2. Knight f2 check. There is, a, there is a move which went on this board. Queen a1, which he found. Threatening he queen found. h1 checkmate. That is a, that's a nice pattern. King h2. This was queen f1, queen e 2 Maybe just some direct, no, queen b2 check. What are we going to do? Panic. <laughs> you can got, only got 10 seconds to decide as well. Panic. Okay, the king tucks himself away. Okay, queen. Queen e2 now should be a, a clincher. Queen e2 allows a check. Not much of a check because the king can hide on h7. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, one, ch one check. When is that? Knight e5? Okay. Idea is that knight takes f3 and queen h2. Eight. By the way, that comes with the tempo against the queen and the f3 pawn. Hey, not bad. Two. Not bad. Queen b3, but queen f1. And now the b3 pawn starts marching towards its destination. The coronation squares. Yeah. Clear. Queen to d1. Okay, queen f2. Queen f2 and knight takes f3. Looks good, it looks doesn't it? great. Oh, even. Queen c2, queen. Queen g4 setting up a pin, but I'm okay. b2. b2! Yeah. Oh, wow. that's nasty. And that is yeah. a handshake. At the end, it was nerves and just, you know, this was the playoff that never occurred in Toronto. If you think about it, if Bobby had won against Jan, Kokesh and Fabi would have been playing for the role of challenger.